Uh, so welcome everyone. As I mentioned um, uh, just a few moments ago, feel free to introduce yourself in the chat, where you're representing um, and, and what institution you're representing or company. Uh, we have a great group here today, as I said before, uh, lots of If you can put yourself on mute um, as you come in, that would be great. Uh, we totally understand that, that technology issues are, are uh, absolutely prevalent. Um, in fact, I've gotten a few emails already. So, but anyways, welcome to the Micro Simulation Development Lab workshop. This is the first time we are doing this workshop. This is the third year we're doing this program. So we're very, very excited um, to provide you with this opportunity, especially those who are not yet convinced that they want to create a micro simulation yet. Um, we are hoping that this gives you the opportunity to um, develop some ideas and to do some creative um, processing with, with others around us today. So that is the goal. So to get us started today, um, we're going to do a little bit of a brief introduction as to what this program is and why we do it. Um, and that will be led by our CEO, Dan LeClaire. And then we will jump right into our first panel. Our first panel um, is going to feature some amazing um, speakers from all over the world who are also previous authors. And we have a few winners of us today. And Patty, I did realize that we have the wrong picture for you, but you will see Patty's lovely face. And, and he is um, here representing with Divya and they are a team together. We have Anna, hopefully Jewel Wu joining us and, and same with uh, uh, Gaines. And they will be discussing kind of what got them started on this program, uh, what, what inspired them, what uh, creativity they used, in some instances, it was cases. In some instances, it was uh, research. And so that is um, what will lead us into our first breakout session. It is a 10 minute random breakout session uh, where we will be discussing uh, kind of a role and context that you may have developed. You may have already developed. I know a few of you have indicated on the form um, that you have an idea or, or you um, don't have an idea. And so we hope that this kind of inspires some of that. We'll do that for 10 minutes and then come back. And then we will go into our second um, panel, which will be with our CAPSIM, um, our CAPSIM representatives today, which are Kelsey Zimmerman and, and Matt Shell. They are lovely. We've worked with them for a few years now. Uh, and after that, we'll jump into hopefully a second breakout session for about five minutes to talk about the problem and solution components of your micro simulation development ideas, bounce some ideas back and forth for that time, and then come back for a Q&A and I will provide some next steps. I know I sent a lot of information and I just threw a lot of information at you. So as always, feel free to send me an email um, and ask any questions you want to. You can private message me in this chat here. Um, but without further ado, I'm going to pass it over to Dan uh, if you wanna get us started. Thanks, Maddie. You already have gotten us started very nicely. Thank you so much. And welcome, everyone. Let me add uh, my welcome. I started to enter it into the chat, but then realized I probably won't finish before uh, going on. So I, I'll do that. But it's nice to see all the places in the chat. In fact, um, Maddie asked if I would talk a little bit about why we do, why we started doing this in the first place. And you know, when I started at the Global Business School Network, um, um, and, and by the way, you, just a, a quick note, you, you may not know um, much about uh, GBSN, so I should just say we're about 140 schools now from about 50 countries, and uh, uh, our mission is to improve access to quality, locally relevant management education for the developing world. And it's really that local relevance that inspired this work. One of the first things I learned, in fact, I learned this in my previous job um, with AACSB, is that there's a there's a, a, a dearth of, of really great locally relevant content, uh, case studies, examples, things like that, that we could use in classrooms around the world to help uh, support management, uh, learning and development. Uh, so the inspiration really came from this idea that um, we could potentially provide immersive, you know, sort of day on the job kind of experiences in a neat little package called uh, uh, the CAPSIM uh, that helps learners not just learners in the context, but learners from all over the world to experience the context. So 
So the um, initial part of this inspiration really came from this idea of producing locally relevant content. And, and, and um, your work will help us to uh, add to that base and help other professors provide this. But there's a second part. And a part of our job, as you might realize from our mission, is to build capacity, right? Build our skills for teaching management, entrepreneurship, leadership uh, all over the world, and in particular in emerging economies. And we believe strongly that um, professors um, ought to be the center of that, and they need skills. Uh, so part of this was the work that in uh, that Capson had done in developing the authoring platform to build these simulations. So the opportunity really becomes not only producing uh, locally relevant content, but also developing the skills of faculty members like yourselves so that you get good at this, not only building uh, Capsim inbox simulations, but you get good at building um, scenarios. You get good at building uh, cases that are relevant to the communities that you serve. So it's two two parts to our inspiration for doing this. And, and um, I, I need to say that Capsim has been there from the very start. In fact, it, it, one of the things you probably realize about life is that sometimes it's a meeting several years before things happen that create that spark of energy. And it was a meeting in, um, when I was at AACSB with the CAPSIM team that really began to um, make this idea um, uh, something that we thought would, would, would work. And it, and it has, thanks to the great work of the CAPSIM team and uh, people like Maddie on the GBSN team and people like you who come together to help us do this. Now we have, we have some work to do though, and I wanna make sure that I'm uh, keeping to the time. Uh, uh, Maddie, at, at this point, I think we want to switch to the panel discussion, right? We, we and, do. We absolutely do. Yeah. And um, would you mind, um, are, are we going to highlight the or spotlight the? Yes. The okay. We're working on it right now. Here we go. We have Divya and Patty. And I think those are our panelists right now. I'm going to keep an eye out for our other ones. Great. Thank you so much, Maddie. And uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with introductions Great. here because you'll get to know. I got it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, Maddie. Uh, you'll get to know them as we go. But let me just say, let me just um, say that Anna, Divya, uh, Patty, they're, they've been, um, they've experienced this process, but they've, they've also been very engaged in the mission of GBSN and the work that we do. And um, uh, they believe in the kind of work uh, that uh, all of your schools are doing. So they uh, have been a wonderful asset for GBSN and we just appreciate it so much. Willing to show up and share um, uh, your ideas essentially and your inspiration. In fact, if there's one, um, goal that we have with this panel, it's it's really to help everyone in the group to um, take experiences, ideas that they have and convert those ideas into something that could potentially be um, uh, micro simulation. And um, I, I want everybody in the audience, everybody in the group to already begin uh, swirling around in your head the set of ideas that you might be able to pull from when we uh, ultimately reach the, the breakout session. So I'm just gonna start with a very basic uh, question that I want each of the three of you to, to answer. Uh, and that is, um, you know, once you learned about what we're doing at um, GBSN with CAPSIM, with this micro simulation development lab, um, what, what was the inspiration that sparked your idea for what to build? Uh, you might need to tell us a little bit about what you what you uh, uh, what your idea was, and then uh, tell us a little bit about what sparked your uh, interest in building it. Uh, why don't we start with uh, because she can't wipe that smile off her face? Let's start with Divya. 
which is always okay. great to start with. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Dan, for this opportunity. And first of all, you know, uh, we have developed uh, both both the years we have participated in the micro simulation. And when when you started this uh, GBSN Capsim in 2020, I think the the it we we found it. Uh, me and Paddy, we both found it as a fantastic opportunity to learn something new, because simulations are a great way to engage students or any audience. And we we have been talking about experiential learning more often. We have been talking about immersive learning experiences classes. Uh, we have been talking about the flipped classroom experiences for our graduates. Now, how do you provide those experiences? And as Dan, you earlier mentioned about locally relevant cases or locally relevant situations, and there is a real dearth. So when this opportunity came to us, and uh, you know, of course, we both jumped in because that was a pandemic time. We had uh, enough time to also learn. So upskill ourselves. So we actually saw, both of us saw this as an opportunity to upskill, upskill ourselves and, and learn something new because we have been on the receiver side of the simulations, but we have never designed a simulation. So we, we our, our first um, sort of motivation was to learn something new. And of course, uh, uh, during pandemic, uh, uh, that time in India, there were a lot of uh, migrant issues were happening. So. Our, our simul the first simulation was also sort of triggered from what was happening around us. I I'll stop now and then uh, invite Anna or Padmanabhan to share their experiences and I'll, I'll come again whenever you want. Well, thank you very much. May I then? Yes, yes, I, yes, I was gonna. <laughs> Just going with the flow. Thank you very much, uh, Dan, uh, Maddie, and Divya for uh, this introduction so far. Uh, so I would say that um, Divya has covered pretty much uh, what I was uh, meant to say as well in terms of uh, what triggered us, Marjan uh, Jalali and myself, so my colleague and I, we are strategy um, scholars connected with sustainability, uh, both of us, because we put these two areas together. So when we saw this opportunity, and we at Ishkite Business School had just entered GBSN, uh, uh, so it was a great, great opportunity to start getting involved with it. Um, we immediately thought, well, let's go for um, a simulation on sustainability in the fashion industry. So there were different possible areas that we could cover and we went for that one. So we, and we had a lot of fun, I must say. So we wanted to learn something, uh, other methods uh, to allow the experiential um, learning to happen as Divya was mentioning. Um, but also personally, it, it, it was such a, great challenge to think about all the ethical dilemmas that we would confront our students with that we had a lot of fun also so i, I would say that uh, this is something it's an opportunity for us uh, to bring something new and um, to actually put in place an approach to, to teaching and learning that we defend, as Divya was saying as well, um, in a different way that traditional we, we wouldn't use. But also for the faculty, it's a great opportunity to put ourselves in the shoes of the decision makers and try to think about all the possible solutions and how to weigh them. But I won't go into much detail, but it's a lot of fun, I can ensure you. Thank you, Dan. Well, thank you, Anna. Thank you, Divya. The, the, uh, you got us off to a great start and sort of understanding what, what sparked your interest in uh, doing this uh, work. I, I wonder, Patty, if you could add something to that as well. But then also, let's, let's make that transition and begin to think about what, what was the inspiration for uh, the work. For, for example, Anna, um, we'll come back to you on this, but you know the the fashion industry. You know why? Why the fashion industry? And um, was it was it part of your research? Things like that. We'll come back to that question. But Patty, um, adding yeah. to what uh, Anna and Divya said, what sparked your interest in in doing this? But then um, lead us off in a discussion about the interest in and in particular this. If I remember right, you're you're working a, with a, on a milk producing. You might want to tell us a little bit about the scenario. No. Um, oh no, I was with uh, Divya and I partnered in producing simulation, which is into 
uh, migrant laborers, the issues of migrant laborers that, uh, that was we were in. Uh, in fact, uh, we were into writing case studies. And uh, when this opportunity came in, why not we explore it? It's a curiosity. In fact, uh, uh, this is an unexplored territory for us particularly, and the kind of the entire capsule has been given into it, it attracted our attention. Why not? Why not this? That's one. And number two, uh, we were quarantined. I was in court. COVID and nothing to do. So <laughs> we want to do something interesting to keep our mind occupied. Uh, 21 days quarantine, we need to do something interesting. So the only thing that came, the challenging thing that came to our mind was, let's take this. Let's work on this. So the, 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 the entire COVID quarantine room became like a war room. <laughs> <laughs> with uh, with the works, paper printouts all over, and uh, and the rest is the history. Oh, uh, well, thanks for that. I you know just collecting what uh, Divya Anna you have said. You know, it's this is your your initial interest was sparked by the idea of um, b believing in experiential learning, but also wanting to learn not only learn skills, but I like uh, uh, Anna your idea of this was an opportunity to to look at some of the things you've you've examined from a new perspective right from a, um, a practice and potentially from a even a, um, a customer or um, vendor perspective um, patty uh, board boredom is also motivation for many people which is i think great but now now so part of our challenge uh, today with this um, workshop is is really to help um, reveal ideas that other people may have nascent in their heads right there these um, and um, often these things can come from from different places right I you know some of the ideas I, I sometimes thought about in fact when we were first starting this I was using an example that I think ultimately played out I was saying what if what if uh, you could be a manager in an Ethiopian garment factory. What kinds of things might you learn, right? And, um, you know, from there, I began thinking about, you know, what if you're an HR manager and dealing with a particular DEI issue in Australia, right? Or, you know, what if you're... Um, and a, a logistics manager, and you're all of a sudden experiencing a challenge of um, late shipments, and it's getting near the holidays, right? So you can go on and on and on about this. But what, what was your inspiration? I'm going to start with Anna, because I, I, I thought about this a little bit earlier, there must be something about fashion that really triggered your interest. Was it your research? Yes, definitely, uh, Dan. So I, I've done, um, together with some um, students as well, some research in the fashion industry. So uh, that's something that um, came into our mind uh, as, as a potential topic. And it's an international topic. It, it gets to all of us. So we are all sensitive to this. Uh, and of course, if we think about some scandals, um, um, uh, like the Hanna Plaza and, and others, that that's, we inevitably we think about a possible case to build on. So um, uh, the, the interesting part is that we started with a scandal, but that was not public yet. Huh? So we have someone from the uh, uh, local newspaper, well, from a local uh, newspaper whose sister happened to work in an NGO and they happened to know someone from the company that was potentially involved in a scandal. So all this magic of trying to build a story uh, behind everything. Um, and that's what really um, made us very enthusiastic about this. And then the idea of, because this happens, huh? this is what happens. We were just bringing some magic here, but that's what happens. We have connections um, in our personal lives. So they had been in school together years ago and they approached the, the manager saying, you know what, we've heard, so I've heard something from my sister and remember her, yeah. But well, we can maybe keep it like as it is or it may become public. And all started like this. So we, we tried different approaches to start the story with and um but yeah that that's that's how often unfortunately things happen and from then on 
we build a whole um, um, uh, history with the scenario, the characters, and then how to um, <clears throat> to measure the skills that you, we wanted to explore, because that's the beauty of the the of the simulation uh, tool, which is. On the one hand, and I'm bringing this uh, more creative and enthusiastic part of the work uh, of the tool, but of course, behind this, there is there is a, a, a more profound um, tool of identifying what are the skills that we want to uh, assess, how will we weight them, how will we measure them. So putting all this together and going back and forth, that, that's the magic. But the choice of the, the topic was definitely related to our interest because it's make it makes it sorry easier to build the story afterwards, in my view. Yeah, yeah that's that's very interesting and perhaps even new ideas for your research have, have come from you know thinking about this scenario in a in a different way um, hopefully you can tell your friends if they were involved in the story at all. indeed for instance the uh, um uh, agenda setting theory based on I, I i hope i'm not getting the wrong name of the theory but it's um about how media influence the way we look at scandals and what happens. So I've been working on that as well. And it's pretty much related to this idea of having okay. the companies exposed or not. Yeah, well, and I like your, basically your analogy to telling a story, right? You, you need to flesh out the character and describe the setting, you know, um, and uh, build a plot around this in some ways, this is part of the experience, which I think is a skill that everyone should have, right? The storytelling. Divya, what what um, what caused your interest? And in, uh, tell us a little bit about the, the micro simulation you built, but then tell us what sparked your interest in, in that particular topic. Yeah, thank you. So I'll talk about the first simulation on DP apparels. So that time, like Anna said that she was working, her research was in fashion industry. I was working on a project on textile industry with the University of Leeds. So textile, I, I had some bit of knowledge about the textile and incidentally, uh, you know, um, Tirupur, which is a hub of textile, Padmanabhan was stuck there for five months during the COVID time, early COVID phase. So, uh, you know, the lo lot of local news of the situation there was also handy. So the stories were around us. And as Anna mentioned that, you know, we, we want to give our students an opportunity to grapple with the issue, which are realistic. And, and so uh, I, I could see as a protagonist, students, when they put themselves, there were a lot of issues. One was the business continuity was an issue because uh, that time, the lockdown period, the retention of workforce become a botheration for the companies. How do you retain them without the work? What do you do with them? And of course, the business continuity as well as responsible management practice. So I, I saw that opportunity to bring out, uh, you know, that business continuity, uh, uh, like, like that, that kind of decision-making. Uh, and also tech, we chose textile because of my ongoing research and easy access to the data. Because uh, when you want to build a story, you want to know some more information. So I know that I knew that we, uh, when we reach out to the people, they will be willing to share their stories. So uh, that was the major, uh, you know, sort of force behind that. One is, uh, like Anna said, one, once you, you should have some kind of idea and story, but you should also think whether that story is convertible easily with the support of data, secondary data or primary data. And, and we preferred in both the simulations, I think Padmanabhan will talk about the second simulation. In both the simulations, we relied on the primary data largely. Of course, there were base was the secondary data, but we relied primarily on the primary data. So I, I think that also is an important part. And the last bit is how are you going to, uh, you know, what the simulation will achieve? What kind of skills set students will evaluate themselves on? So like I mentioned in our first simulation, we knew that we wanted to understand how the students will grapple with this issue of business continuity. So uh, problem solving was one of our skill. Uh, decision making, whether they will be able to take initiative and of course the corporate social responsibility. So uh, finding out the appropriate relevant skills 
and dividing your story, building your story in bits and pieces so that all the relevant skills are covered are also like, that was a challenge, but it's, the whole process was fun. Well, I, I appreciate many things that you said, Divya. One, one thing I hadn't uh, thought much about in this experience, and, and maybe we'll explore this a little bit uh, more uh, in detail, but this idea that you're, you're not, you're, you're obviously uh, creating a story of some sort, right? It's fiction, right? But the goal, part of the goal is to make this real, right? And, and you, you want the data to match <laughs> the experience in some way. So, you know, balancing that uh, fictional part with that reality part, I think both uh, Anna and you have emphasized this to some extent because it's in the news, right? Uh, you know, it reminds me of some television shows sometimes where they say, I think it was um, uh, Law and Order, they say it ripped from the headlines, right? <laughs> this, this, this show. So it's, it's very interesting what you say. But Patty, what, uh, uh, please add to, to what's been said so far with, um, from your perspective, that inspiration, but also, you know, exploring as you began to flesh out uh, some of these ideas. So um, there are, I mean, there are multiple themes where I think there are major themes where they, among the major things, we want to connect with a the theme where we're emotionally connected, number one. And number two, you want to be very honest with the work that we're going to do with it. In a sense, uh, uh, we played the role of protagonist when we designed that particular work. And we also want to be want to play the role of the students or the participants who are going to, who are going to be part of that particular simulation. So the both the ends we need to work, work on. So uh, there lied how how should what which part of the theme are we emotionally connected? So that's that light the question. So but I mean uh, unfortunately I've been there in that that particular space for five to six months being exposed to the, the plight of individuals who went through both at the level of workers as well as the worker to the, the level of promoters, the stakeholders. So, uh, and reading to the media, reading to the articles that's been over there. So uh, when Divya mentioned about it, we just landed on why not we get into this? Probably like uh, at a level we are connecting with the the people over there. If not, we are going to write during that particular point of time. We may miss it. We miss that particular plight. We may not expose what's happening over there. We may not tell the students or tell the participants. They just uh, take an empathetic approach and find out how the workers felt about how the people, how the stakeholders were in that particular situation. If you don't get it, maybe if, if you're going to do it right now, after three years, we may not get that emotional connect over there. So that was pretty. Uh, uh, I mean, uh, what do you call uh, uh, available in terms of, uh, I mean, emotions as well as cognitively, both the ways they're connected to the particular situation. So we couldn't think about anything else other than the situation that we focused on. So that is, that is where this, I mean, this, this came up. Then rest came with, as Divya mentioned about, yes, we started talking with people who are connected with the, with the, with the situation and uh, interviewed so that that's where the honesty came into it um, we, yes we need to create a plot i related uh, resonate with what Anna said we need to create a plot plot is so important but how we can bring the emotions and honesty into that particular plot where the let's say i mean the participants can also imagine themselves put themselves in the shoes and and uh, engage in that particular work so that's where uh, the primary data played over there yeah. Uh, you know the emotion part is very interesting uh, that you bring that up, right? It's it's you know it's part of that reality part, right? Because sometimes when we're so focused on textbooks and theories, we lose sight of that emotion, and that's where a lot of our 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 skills like communication and all of those things really. Um, come to bat, right, for us, right, in thinking about this. But if I understand your point about emotion also is that um, part of the reason why um, you you built this is because of the experience that you've had and, and being in that position and, and having felt it um, uh, firsthand, I, 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 um, I, I like that very much. I wonder though, you know, it, 
if if you're like me, Anna, Divya, Patty, and perhaps you're not, but I hope not for this this question because sometimes when I get a a spark of inspiration, I get a, a really good idea. I think right. I I say, look, this is a is a um, great idea for mic your simulation. I'm I'm thinking, but then. You know, in, in fact, for me, it's often I, 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 I write a lot, right? And every time I get a great idea about something to write about a blog post, for example, I always have this, this period right after this idea where I said, oh, my God, <laughs> now what, right? It's this sort of, you know, the space between, you know, the end piece, you know, that which I had originally envisioned and that spark of an idea that, in, in entrepreneurship, they might call that the valley of death, right? That, where you're, that gap between your idea and getting uh, traction and the financing that needs to, to help you gain that. But what, you know, what happened after the spark of the idea? What, what did you do? What kinds of things did you do to gain traction as you went on the platform, for example, and began to explore or flesh out your idea? I hope I'm asking the question well. Uh, um, uh, uh, maybe uh, Divya, you could start, and then we'll go to Anna, and then Patty, you could comment as well. Yeah. Sure, sure. So you know, one thing when you have an idea, I think you idea to execution, you need. I always believe that when you have a team, that you need a sounding board. Whether you you create that micro simulation together or you create alone, but you need a sounding board. So uh, to check because whether, whether that idea has practicality or not. Whether that idea, you, you may be thinking that's a great idea, but to mm -hmm. develop into micro simulation, you need relevance. You need, as Padmanabhan said, that you need some kind of emotion so, so that students engage with that. So I think, you know, you need uh, a sounding board. And in this, in, in uh, micro simulation, GBSN and Capsim, I think the MET and Kelsey, they are wonderful support. So even if you do not have a team, uh, I, I would encourage everyone, those who are listening, if you do not have a team and if you intend to develop alone also, you have a sign, sounding board with the Capsim team. So uh, share your idea with them, whether this idea, uh, they will guide you. So there is a full support. You need that support to, to turn your idea into execution, to check whether it's relevant, whether it's, it has a practicality, it has that engagement or not. Uh, excellent, uh, Divya. Um, start to that discussion and we're, we're going to come back to that and you'll see why in a second Anna. Yeah, I do agree with you yeah, that the support was uh, very very important particularly because there at some point there are some um, details uh, that you have to set up that uh, may um, change the course of the simulation itself. So it's very important to, to rely on their help as well. Uh, but uh, Marja and I what we did was so, we said, let's go for it. We discussed the topic and then we created um, um, an online document, a Word document, where we would start just putting our ideas down, uh, writing down our ideas. And then we had seen the, the, the platform already, uh, but we would go back and forth from the platform to the, to the file um, to see on the one hand, it's, it's like, writing a novel or a soap in this case. Uh, so because there was a storyline that we wanted to make sure that we had it on a separate piece of paper, but at the same time we'd have to um, develop the emails and the different responses to the emails because it's all about the conversations through emails. Um, so it's very important to be in, in contact with the platform itself, platform itself, but in our experience, it was also important to have like the story uh, line written outside. And of course, and we will discuss, we put it down and then come back. I remember one, one evening that I was abroad in a, in a, a training in, in Madrid. So we were Zooming and uh, discussing the tool again. So 
either together or when we were apart, would we'll, we'll discuss this. And of course, validity, external validity, let's say like Vivi was mentioning, it's very important. I feel that we haven't used that enough, um, but I think that's a very good advice, uh, Divya, uh, that we could have used as well. Yeah. Thanks, Anna. Patty. Yeah, sure. Uh, so uh, uh, we, we had, for the second simulation we created, Professor Hendrik was part of it. Uh, uh, we, we, we belong to this particular geography region, I mean, India. Professor Hendrik was, uh, from that time, I think he was, from, he was working from Canada. Yeah, I remember. So he brought an international perspective when we brought an Indian perspective over there. So it was like, uh, for instance, uh, while we had uh, the platform ready in hand, we worked on creating a Google Doc. Okay, we, we replicated the uh, the uh, uh, the scenarios with the mails responses. So he will work at one one p.m. one one a.m. in the morning, early morning. Uh, so for us, it's one a.m. So for him, it is so in a different time zone. Suddenly we wake up. So it was like uh, um, uh, I mean uh, we each other we become a sounding board. Uh, that's one. Number two. Uh, through this particular process, thanks to working with an international faculty, he brought the perspective of how this ecosystem in that particular region uh, works over there. And we also brought the brutal reality of in this particular country, how it works. So uh, that sync was there. Both of all three of us are kind of oh, understood. Oh, this is a learning itself. When three of us, when, when, when international faculty, for us, is an international faculty. So worked over there, the data sharing, editing, and looking at why not we bring in this perspective over there. I said, in India, it doesn't work like that. So, so right. it's how we, yeah. so it's how we brought in. Uh, yeah. Then we started collecting some secondary resources. We show this is what the reality is. So that added, I mean, uh, so each of us became a sounding board over there as a, a partnership that as a team, we worked like that. I know. Right. Uh, that's where it is. That, that's that's great. I like especially how that sounding board becomes learning platform. And I I, I like this this uh, time zone thing, right? I, I if this were me, I, I I I've done this before. I'm trying to think of the context, but I, I used to wake up in the morning just um, uh, anticipating what was written overnight, right? It's sort of like what did our partners create overnight, and then how does this fit together? So creating that kind of anticipation and the platforms too. But this has been great. You've taken us through a lot, uh, the three of you, and we we appreciate it so so much. Now this the sounding board, Divya, I told you we'd come back to because that's exactly what we've. Um, plan this to do right. So the first the first breakout session, which Maddie and the team are going to help us to do, um, is essentially a sounding board opportunity, right? So we're going to break you into uh, groups of three. You're going to go in with uh, your idea, and if you don't already have one, you're going to create one on the spot, right? <laughs> this idea of you know being a, a you know, an analytics person who uncovers in the data something pretty interesting, um, an opportunity for the company. What do you do with it? It's this a set of ideas that you've heard today. How do you capture your own experience, your own research, um, the stories that you've heard from others that you've worked with, your alumni? How do you bring that to life in this kind of uh, simulation? So we're gonna break you into groups of three and you'll have about 10 minutes. And the goal is to go quickly around the room and share your idea, right? Uh, 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 project manager in an Indian garment factory, right? <laughs> right? Share your idea. Um, go around the room, but then begin to help each other flesh it out. Be that sounding board. And the, the goal is by the end of those 10 minutes, you have a much richer understanding of your idea. And... Um, then we're going to learn a little bit more about how to convert it. Um, that's where we'll bring in Matt and Kelsey and the team, and we'll um, then explore another dimension. Maddie, um, great. Welcome back, everyone. Hopefully, you you managed to be sounding boards for your your partners in the group. But 
Um, I'm I'm not going to do much except hand it over to uh, Kelsey and Matt. I think that's my job, and they've just been spectacular with GBSN. I I need to say, and I think I've said it over social media at times that they're one of the um, one of our favorite people to work with. They've always been so supportive. Uh, there's the the it it's always hit or miss when you're running a, a business, right? I mean when you're uh, Capsim is a is a business. They're in the business of creating these experiences, these simulations. But let me tell you that they're they're in this for the right reason with us, and that is to do the kinds of things that you describe, right? Create these relevant, locally relevant experiences to help faculty build the skills, and they've been just so supportive. Uh, Kelsey, Matt, uh, please, uh, this the screen is yours. Absolutely. Well, right off the bat, thank you very much for the introduction, Dan, and it's a pleasure to work with GBSN for the third straight year for the simulation competition. Uh, what I'd like to do now is first we'll go ahead and do some quick introductions on our side, then actually kind of take you through some of the best practices to kind of keep in mind as you create your own custom simulation. Uh, but to start things off, uh, just to introduce myself, my name is Matthew Shell. I'm Senior Business Development Manager here at Capsum Simulations, and I've helped virtually all of our academic as well as corporate authors with creating their own custom simulations on the program, or on the platform. And then also, Kelsey, you'd like a quick introduction yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm Kelsey Zerman. Uh, I'm the e-learning project manager here at Capsum. Um, so I work directly with our corporate and academic uh, authors with creating custom simulations that they can use for a variety of use cases. Um, and yeah, I also help create some of our internal versions as well. So that's, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And just to kick things off, you know, we had an excellent first panel where we talked about kind of the motivation behind some of GBSN's authors with creating their own custom sims. And what we'd like to do now is kind of focus more on kind of the post development side, you know, how do you how do you best utilize these simulations and instruction, um, both in terms of, like I said, best practices, use cases, but also implementation models, whether it's you as a sole instructor implementing it, or maybe you and your team of faculty are creating simulations as well. So the first thing I'll go ahead and cover is the most common use cases of inbox simulations uh, that we see in academia. Uh, and then we'll speak to different ways you can implement that in your curriculum. So let's go ahead and get started. So first things first, let's talk about academic use cases, because this is something you'll certainly want to keep in mind when you're building your simulation. And really, it all comes down to what outcome you want to achieve. And we've seen quite a few different use cases on the academic side and through the GBSN competition over the last uh, two years now. Uh, but you know, it can all start by simply wanting to create a fun and engaging activity for your students. You know, something that's a quick and practical exercise of say, key concepts in your course, a knowledge check, or even trying to have them actively apply some of their skills. And really think of this as a way to kind of bring concepts to life in a way that kind of mimics how students will eventually solve problems when they enter the workforce. But as far as a second use case, moving on beyond just kind of more of a, a quick exercise, you have live case studies, as was alluded to in our first panel. And this is probably one of the more fascinating case studies that are use cases that we see. And of course, we're all familiar with the concept of case studies. You know, you read about a challenge a company is facing, you present it with a couple of questions, and then you want to write out what you would do in that given scenario and provide some justification. Well, what, with these inbox simulations you're going to be able to create, you can take that to the next level and make it truly alive, where the student is actually interacting with the key stakeholders that are usually just, you know, represented, you know, um, uh, in a written format for a case study. You know, they could be internal or external, dealing with clients or dealing with, you know, say, management, for instance, uh, like a typical case study would allude to. But what's nice about this is that it, the students are essentially in the driver's seat making these decisions that they can see the consequences of in real time. And in fact, uh, as Dan alluded to at the beginning of today's session, it's very common for us to work with professors that have already created existing case studies, and then they simply modify that into a much more immersive email format in the form of an inbox sim. And then moving on from live case studies, we can talk about the third case we see here, which is assessments, uh, particularly when it's done in, say, a pretest post test format. So let's say, for instance, you know, you create a, a simulation to implement in your course and you want to put students in it at the beginning of the course 
and at the end of the semester, let's say, that way you can assess their grasp of certain skills or knowledge they've acquired over your curriculum. Well, you can do just that with Inbox, where they simply can go through your experience twice over a period of time, say two, three months, or even say over a six month semester, and you're gonna be able to track their development empirically and longitudinally without ever giving them the most effective or correct answer. So you're protecting the integrity of it, but also getting some great data on how they've improved over the, the course. And then really to build on that assessment points, you know, depending on how close the inbox you create is aligned with your institution's learning objectives. We've also seen these simulations used to empirically measure assurance of learning for accreditation as well. And then as a quick final case, uh, something that was also referred to in the last panel is uh, around using de-identified data from these simulations for research purposes. That way you can see how individuals would go through certain decision-making steps, depending on the unique scenario that placed them. And this is a quick kind of overview of what we see on the academic front. Uh, really quickly, I just wanted to allude to how we've seen this in the corporate side as well, because keep in mind that the inbox you create is essentially a career readiness tool too. Uh, in fact, we work with companies like you know, Microsoft, Caterpillar, Yellow Corporation, uh, and several international firms as well, who are using the exact same simulations utilized in higher education to help with selection of recruitment or identifying skill gaps in their organizations and so on. But the, at, the, at the end of the day, in terms of key benefits from what you're creating here, you can expect continuity where students are, are, are able to operate you know, within a tool, within an experience that can really follow them over the course of, your, of a given course or the curriculum. You have consistency in that they're interacting with this sort of familiar email interface that they'll most certainly interact with in the real world. So it gives that high level of immersion. And then of course, the obvious component here is customization. I mean, literally the sky's the limit on what you create here since virtually all career fields out there are using some form of email correspondence. But now let's go ahead and switch gears and just quickly note a couple of different ways we've seen these inboxes put into different parts of, a, of an academic curriculum. Uh, first and foremost, most common is embedded directly into the course. We see it very commonly done in say business communication courses, entrepreneurship, or intro to business or fundamental style courses. But we've also seen it done at the program level as well where these tools have been used for orientation or retreats for different schools as kind of an onboarding into a given curriculum. And outside of that, alluding back to what I was talking about on the corporate side, we've also seen these used in career services as a great skill assessment or as a very practical way for students to see if they decide to pursue a certain career, exactly what a day in the life would look like. And then finally, you have non-degree programs, as I was alluding to on the corporate side, where we've seen this used for everything from certification to even within executive training programs. But again, I would say for the purposes of the GBSN competition, what we've seen and most commonly is that course embedded inbox simulation. And then let's actually dive into that a bit more. You know, how can you implement it directly into your course? Because there's different levels of involvement that you can have. And the first one is, of course, just having as a standalone self-directed experience, that fun and engaging use case that we refer to because it's easy as just sending students a hyperlink where they can instantly access your sim and go through it. And then you can see their results in real time. But from there, you can add a little bit onto that to make it a little bit more immersive. You can say, have them go through the simulation and then have a simple class discussion right after they completed it. That debrief will allow them to boost their understanding of the concepts you were looking to have come across in your sim and ensures that they're understanding the application of the concepts within the sim. And then finally, we've seen this taken even a step farther, where certain individuals, like say in a live case study format, or if they've written a textbook, will make these little mini modules in inbox to really tie it even closer to their curriculum. So just a couple examples here. And then what about at the, at the program level or at the, at the curriculum level? Well, we've seen this use where different individuals have made their own inbox simulations for different individual courses. We've seen where a team of faculty, sometimes you know, two or three members within a given GBSN team, will create different variations of their inbox simulation to pepper into different courses. So that way there's kind of a shared experience across the curriculum. 
And then in some cases, when you know, we all, uh, a lot of times our GBSM authors will kind of advocate for inbox within their organizations and more faculty come on, we've seen some institutions that have had an inbox in every step of the curriculum. That way, we're really bringing concept right into practical application. And the final thing I'll close with here before I send it off to Kelsey is, uh, you know, the validity and the reliability of the tool that you're using, because, you know, that matters just as much as providing that real world experience that you as authors will will eventually create. And is that that with any simulation we create, particularly this inbox platform, we always try to infuse the science of learning within it. So we work with IO psychologists for the methodology for our in-house versions in that very format that you're going to be experiencing as an author is gonna give you that exact same outcome. So the science of learning is kind of baked into any simulation you create on the platform. And really the key point I wanna I want to hit on here is that we not only get fantastic feedback from students that go through GBSN versions and from the community at large, but also from the larger uh, industry and business and educational technologies as well. So you know that not only do you have a scientifically backed tool and research backed tool, but also one that's validated by several institutions out there, such as EdTech Digest, Brandon Hall Group, and even training industry as well. But with that, a quick recap of different use cases, different implementation models where you can see your simulation implemented after you've created it. And now what I'll do is go ahead and hand it over to Kelsey. We'll take you a little bit more through the actual resources you'll encounter in our authoring platform to make a successful inbox experience. Kelsey. Thanks, Matt. Switch screen over here. Um, so yeah, so the next question is, how do I get started? <laughs> um, so after the workshop, you will be sent a form to indicate your interest in moving forward with the competition. Uh, you'll select a team captain who will register as an author on the authoring platform. Here's the link we will provide it as well. Uh, that person will share the login information with their team so you can build together. Um, so I did want to let you know there is no change log available on the platform. So this means when you make changes, there is uh, no record of the changes being made. So for this reason, make sure that you're communicating within your team regarding any changes um, being made. So um, I think Anna mentioned sort of working off platform in a doc first and then getting some of your um, content in after. That's completely all right to do it that way, or you can just work together in a video call or share your notes after making edits. Um, so there's just a couple ways that teams work together. Um, but I just want to make sure everybody's aware that the change log um, is, is not a component of the platform. So share that that team captain registers as an author. And then you share that login information with your team. So a little bit about the resources. So once you log in, you'll be director, directed to an author dashboard. On that dashboard, there are a variety of resources that you can use to get started. Uh, it contains a resource library uh, that is housed on that main, main author dashboard uh, that contains a variety of videos and links uh, that can aid you in getting started with the simulation. So for those of you veterans in the platform, this resource library is kind of an, a, new, um, a new feature we have. Um, it's been really helpful to a lot of authors. We have sample characters, sample emails and skills. Um, that you can use directly or you can use to help get you um, inspired or motivated to create your own um, characters, emails, um, skills, and so forth. Um, so we, I know we kind of alluded to uh, originally a little bit about the sort of support materials you can include. So there's also an example organizational chart here um, to help your participant or your learner kind of get context on their role. Um, there are a variety of other different resources you can add um, to help kind of up the validity or the, the realistic feel of your simulation, which we can cover later. Um, but yeah, there's a lot of available resources right here on the platform uh, that you can reference um, as you start to build. Um, a little bit more on that. So once you've created your new project within that dashboard within the builder, uh, there are many information buttons um, that are associated with different components of the simulation, um, of the simulation and of the builder itself. If you click on these, uh, you'll get more information and technical how-tos. There's also a help and support tab up here that contains a lot more resources and it also acts as a resource library. So the help and support tab will exist um, as you build right here at the top right. And uh, when I'm speaking to these information buttons, this is what they look like. Once you select them, 
they'll provide some more information on how to technically use uh, comp different components of the builder. So uh, along with on-platform resources, registered competitors will receive weekly check-in emails uh, from us here at CASM, which will outline different sections of the simulation creation process. These emails will be shared at the beginning of the week and will contain a, a recording of the previous week's office hour for any who aren't able to attend the office hour. That end, once a week, CAPS will be hosting an office hour, which is dedicated to one simulation development component. The first half of that brief presentation, uh, it will be a brief, brief presentation from CAPSUM here, and the second half will be a short Q&A session. Um, you know, we're aware that we have a very international group of competitors, so for anyone that won't be able to attend, we are going to share that recording within the next week's um, update check-in email. So that is a um, quick brief uh, overview of the sort of support you'll see from us here at CAFSUM. Um, as mentioned in the, uh, the panel, we are happy to be a resource for you. During those Q&A sessions, feel free to hop on and um, talk to us about that component of your development process uh, that we're speaking to that week. And we can definitely act as that sounding board for you. So get from us here at CAFSUM over to Dan or Maddie. Maddie, how about if you <laughs> take it from here? I, I'm uh, curious about the the um, the breakout group. I'd love to to have it. I know you're wondering whether or not, but I think it's a it's a good opportunity for people to explore some questions together, if that's okay with you. Absolutely. So uh, we will have a five minute breakout group at this time to uh, in the same groups to talk a little bit more about um, your your concept, the context, the role, and most importantly, the problem that you are looking to develop as well and, and get some of those opinions. So at this time, um, yeah. I am going to. Oh, Could I offer a suggestion as well? Please, no, please I think do. I think this is also a good opportunity to bounce some questions off each other. Right. Because I, I when we come back. Um, this is your opportunity to ask, uh, especially Matt and uh, Kelsey, but also Maddie and myself, some questions. We also have uh, a couple of the panelists from earlier are still here. So we have an opportunity to address your questions. And sometimes I know people are a little hesitant in the beginning, but uh, in the small group, you know, ask each other, you know, what's bothering you about this? What, what do you see as potential obstacles? You know, what what um, are you less certain about um, um, as you get into this experience? You're, you know, I like to say this is a competition, but it's also an experience where we support each other. So our job is to build this community of uh, sounding boards as Divya called it earlier today. So please do uh, five minutes, just quick breakout and we'll Absolutely. have them back for a Q and A. Absolutely. Well, welcome back everyone. How are we doing, Maddie? Is, uh, we're, we're missing a couple people, but they'll join us. So please go ahead. Great. Well, we 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 left the last fifteen minutes of this um, open for um, all of you um, to ask questions, uh, to comment, um, explore um, new ideas potentially. We were just talking. Uh, the Matt, I was asking Matt about his work with corporations, right? Because you know we're we're so steeped in academia, and we're talking about the use cases often in academia. But um, uh, uh, the inbox simulations are finding a really great um, set of clients in in business. Yeah. Uh, Matt, I, I, maybe you could tell the group a couple of these stories as sort of a starting point to get things started. Yeah, um, absolutely. Um, I yeah, they're... I mean, just to, just to start off, I was alluded, I was just uh, describing to Dan and the rest of the GBSN team, you know, how we see this used with co corporations like Microsoft, for instance, where you know they're utilizing this to be able to assess really the top one two percent of their organization to see where are their skills at now as a kind of snapshot in time, and then kind of have an inbox kind of follow them throughout the employee journey, whether they're just starting and going through onboarding exercises or all the way up to mid-level leadership at this point and seeing how they develop their skills longitudinally over time. 
but also getting an insight into key strengths that maybe even the individual doesn't know. Is, are they an effective supervisor? Do they have good ethical competencies, for instance, or good time management skills? All of these things you're able to assess through these inboxes you'll be able to create. And it's all done in a very, you know, again, practical manner where it's, it's not, you know, as a questionnaire, for instance, it's actively having them go through the steps that they would typically do in a role anyway to see how they would do in that role. Uh, but one, one example I, I also want to hit on, Dan, is, you know, the, the relationship between academia and corporate with these simulations. So here in the United States, for instance, we partner with a couple of organizations that obviously have partnerships with larger corporations. It's very common, of course, for business schools to work directly with consulting companies or firms to, to do career fairs, for instance, right? So we've gotten to the point now where the faculty that started maybe three or four years ago with making an inbox simulation just for their own use in their own course are now directly partnering with large organizations in their state to basically make these role previews, let an individual see what is it like to be a financial analyst or to be a marketing specialist or even a HR manager, for instance. That way they see what is a day in the life at say Accenture or McKinsey, for instance, and being able to try that while they're still in their, their academic institution and make those relationships that's much earlier. And then of course, from the corporate to academic side, there are corporations, of course, informing academia of where the exact skills or competency areas are lacking in current candidates. That way they can focus on that even further. So the nice kind of circular feedback loop there. Nice, nice. You know, I, I always thought that the ultimate team for building a simulation, a micro simulation might be an academic and a, a practitioner, right? Correct. Right. And, and the idea that they, you know, have some grounding, some academic or theoretical grounding in terms of the what what's happening and uh, embed it with the learning, but also to have that sort of day to day things, the things that we 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 don't always see. I, I always tell the team that you know I love I love you guys, but I only know ten percent of what you do on a day to day basis. Right, just understanding sometimes what people do is is often a, a challenge. But we must have some questions. There's a um, couple of ways you can ask them. One is um, you could raise your hand. Uh, two is you can unmute yourself or make yourself visible. Uh, three is you could post it in the chat and, and ask Maddie to ask. <laughs> it's okay to do that as well. But um, please, this is your opportunity. Uh, Raman, you just made yourself visible. That's a cue. <laughs> And, I did have a question though. Yeah. If that, yeah. Please introduce so I guess yourself, I, Ramin. Yeah. Oh, I'm Ramin, uh, Ramin Bender. Uh, so in the University of Limerick in Ireland. Yes. Um, at the Kimmy Business School. Um, and I think what we're we're trying to figure out how how big or small to make this. Also the idea of like a this pilot-ish, like the first time doing it versus like the we're excited about the idea of doing it, that it's uh, potential is distracting us. <laughs> I guess the best way. So like, how do you start and how small should it be? Because uh, uh, I can give you a snapshot of what we're doing, but I think basically it's, we're trying to do circular economy in a small city in Ireland. We have different, uh, different stakeholders. We've been doing a simulation, but with no technology, just with stakeholders and paper. Um, but now it's we have a, a global certificate, a grad certificate. So we have to figure out how to do it uh, better than that. <laughs> so they, and there we are. Absolutely. Well, Kelsey, as our as our as our resident uh, expert in uh, instructional design, any initial thoughts on your side? <laughs> yeah. So I completely understand what you're dealing with in terms of getting so excited about the concept that it's getting a little overwhelming in terms of actual application. So I think the first thing to think about is that this is a micro simulation. Um, these are designed for individual digestion. So one person going through the experience alone and then possibly debriefing as a group. So normally people do not go through the simulation as a team. It's one person going through the simulation in terms of actual immersion, you're kind of walking a fine line. You want to immerse, you want to be long enough to immerse somebody, but not long enough that they completely lose interest or get too immured in it that is actually too stressful. We have a lot of people talk about, I'm thinking about my own personal email right now while I'm answering these emails that are unrelated. Um, so, you know, the ideal inbox length is around 
30 minutes or less. Um, we have some people that have created multiple versions. Um, if they want to have what Matt mentioned, sort of pre and post test, well, they'll have the same world, but a second one later um, that has sort of different scenarios, same skills. Um, so there's a lot of different ways you, you can do this. Um, as Matt mentioned, these sort of um, role preview stuff, sometimes they're much, much shorter um, for the, so when you're thinking of the actual application after you complete it, um, I would say 30 min minutes is usually a good place to, to think about in terms of timing. Um, now I can't exactly say, oh, this is this many emails because it's hundred percent about how long it would take the learner to deal with the scenario that, that you're presenting them. So the solution to that is trial. Um, there's a preview option within the inbox builder where you can actually click through and run through the simulation you've created thus far. So you'll be able to see how long it would actually take someone to work through what you've created. Um, in terms of what that usually means scenario-wise, um, it's it's all about realism, right? So if I'm getting into my e email inbox, it's likely that I'm not dealing with only one situation a day, right? Unless that's a really, really bad day and it's a really, really bad situation where I have to dedicate all my attention to that. So we usually think about maybe three different scenarios, maybe more if they're easier to be dealt with. Um, so maybe one scenario just requires me to answer it once and I get one reply and that's the end of that story. I'm asked to pull this data for someone and share it with them accurately. That's the skill I'm showing I can do. And then it's all she wrote versus here's a more nuanced situation where I have to make decisions that you know, might spur very different outcomes um, based on how I do. So maybe that tends to draw. I make one decision that spurs one outcome that has a certain response. Um, so thinking about it from that perspective, uh, thinking about it versus how, how long does the scenario need to be realistically for someone to handle it? Um, and how do I how do I weight that in a way that makes that scenario kind of in that sweet spot in terms of yeah. Um, so I know that's both an answer and not an answer. Um, so is, is there anything like specifically, does that help or is there anything specifically you're thinking of that I can help clarify? No, that, that's really helpful. I know it's quite nebulous, but it's, I mean, even your answer was a lot, is quite large, but that's what I was looking for. I mean, like, is there, is it normal to, to provide like pre-reading or something like that? Like, or like a, or a document of like, this is your role. And then they answer the questions from that role or, and maybe you can hand out different roles and that's how people could handle the same situation, but from a different role. So it's yeah. actually included in the onboarding experience. You'll in, and part of the authoring platform will allow you to introduce the role to a certain, to the participant. You'll give them their role introduction, as well as some background onto the kind of day they're walking into. So that's all provided as a part of the experience. Not to say that people don't also have a little pre-prep with their students before they go into it, um, but we can definitely show you what it looks like to go through as a participant. That might be helpful in terms of um, understanding that, but they definitely do. You build that into the simulation, that, that sort of introduction. Um, Inbox is sort of designed to be more instructor hands-off um, if you build it uh, using all the different components in the builder. Um, so it should be a little bit more hands-on. Yeah. And then if I could, I could add just maybe an additional point or two more general around kind of getting started in content creation. Um, I would say there's probably two main ways that we, we start conversation with authors. Uh, it's either A, they have a scenario in mind, like such as a case study where they know exactly the situation they want to put the student in, but they don't know what skills they want to assess or vice versa. They know exactly, I want to measure someone's effective communication or their problem solving capabilities, but I don't know the scenario. Both are mutually correct in which, in, in what I mean by that is you can kind of work your way back from either way, where if it's a scenario, you kind of flesh out the scenarios and then you start to find common themes of what are we really hitting on here? Is it decision making? Is it supervisory competencies? That sort of thing. And then create your skills there or conversely. And then just as a quick point to how content is typically generated, I mean, whether it's an academic or a corporate atmosphere, a lot of the times, I would say the majority of the time, 
the individuals we're working with are simply pulling real world emails, real world situations, their own war stories that they've gone through and simply de-identifying them and using that for the basis of content because you know firsthand whether something turned out you know, effective or not and using that as the basis for content. And honestly, as Kelsey alluded to, most of our experiences are less than 30 minutes. Some as short as only five or 10. Think about it as basically like only a minute or two per email you created as a good gauge of your experience. Enough time to obviously digest the information from an email and then make that key decision before moving on to the next stimuli. So just some quick tips there. I wanted to add one thing is when we're talking about the weekly cadence of email um, support, we're going to cover like kind of each of these components we're talking about in terms of what Matt's talking about, pulling scenarios out of skills or skills out of scenarios. Those are going to be, um, you're going to be provided a bunch of resources on how to sort of break those down. Yeah, that, 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 thanks so much, uh, Kelsey and Matt and, and Raman for asking the question that, you know, that this is designed to be an experience, right, where we walk you through the process and, uh, you know, that we believe in experiential learning, right? What better way to build this, uh, learn how to build a simulation than to build a simulation, right? <laughs> So this is this is great, Raman. We'll we'll look forward to your your participation. Other questions? Other questions? Uh, Andrew, uh, you you need to unmute yourself. There you go. Yeah, tell us where you're from, Andrew. I I I'm I'm from Perth. Yeah. And, oh yeah, that's uh, right, Perth, right? Yeah. Matt and Kelsey's uh, information. I'm together with my partners in Malaysia, the affiliate for Capsim in Malaysia, and, and the affiliate in Australia for the corporate side. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, I have to confess that our, our focus and, and most of the engagement we have is, is with the full simulations. So with the micro simulations and the area that we'd like to really sort of get into. Yeah? So I look to touch base with you, Kelsey and Matt. But just an observation. So again, I'm not from the uh, the academic side. Background is from the corporate side. So I've got that other lens there. But uh, the micro simulations, there's already a good library of them here, yeah? covering a range of soft and hard skill topics, et cetera. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But my passion being uh, you know, for finance governance background, but early on in my career, understanding that behind the numbers are people, systems, and processes. Yeah? And, and so the full simulation engages participants in learning holistic business management, micro simulations in particular sort of topics. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So with the micro simulations, where I see an opportunity for us in partnership in, in Malaysia, we work with the Malaysian Productivity Corporation, who are the custodians of the Malaysian Business Excellence Framework. In Australia, the Australian Business Excellence Framework, and they all originate from Baldrige in America. Yeah? And they are possibly, in my experience, the best holistic business management guides. They guide you in the key dimensions a good business must focus on, then they drill down into the next sectors and down into the particular topics that micro simulations deal with, yeah? Mm -hmm. So, you know, I, I, in my mind, I see an opportunity to add the holistic picture, the big picture up front, and then connect your micro simulations into the hard and soft skill areas. Because at the moment, it's like a library of many topics, yeah? But in the real world, you need to exercise them in the context of holistic business management, not, not yes. in you know individual topic areas. Yeah. So yeah. so I'll just leave it at that. But that's my area of thinking. Happy to work with anyone uh, in in developing that that holistic business management uh, concept in a micro simulation and then drilling down. Uh, so enough for now. Let someone else speak. Thank, thank you, Andrew. I, I need to apologize. I, I was so into the the question that Raman posed and the, the yeah. responses that I lost track of time. I'm sorry about that, everyone. Um, um, Kelsey, Matt, no need to respond to Andrew. We just need to thank you. 
uh, for, for being here and Divya and Patty as well and everyone who joined us uh, for this um, session. I'll leave it to Maddie to close us out, but I apologize, Maddie, for losing no. time, I promise. You. No problem, no problem. Um, thank you all again for, for being here. I will be sending you uh, an, an email with the follow-up. We have a one question form um, that will determine your interest and we'll give you the link to sign up on uh, Capson as an author. Um, I'll also be providing my email and Kelsey's and the recording. So um, we hope to see all of your simulations and I will also be working on providing those badges. Um, so with that, I wish you all a good evening, good morning and good afternoon. And Dan, maybe yes. it, it, just reminders to $5,000 prize for $5, the best <laughs> I think we forgot to talk about that that's so we do uh expect to see you in the competition remember it's an experience at the same time and we like um to build the community around it but it's a competition too so we're looking for the best ones it is a $5,000 prize and all authors who finish will have three months of support if I'm not mistaken right Kelsey yep. awesome okay and another badge and another <laughs> all the badges. Um, so thank you, thank you so much. Thank you all for your kind comments we're seeing in the chat, and um, I will see you all very soon.